Welcome to the Loose Cannon vlog number 15. I'm doing a take two on number 15 because thanks to uh, one of my few subscribers, I think he's known as the Wise Man, uh, thanks to him I found out that I recorded last time with very little volume at all. And the reason why was, I'll show you, it was this, these headphones. I got this software, I mean, I'm, I'm really going right off the track here, but I got this software, <laughs> there's a little bit of promotion here, Dragon Software. Um, I'm not sure if I recommend it yet, but um, it helps you helps you write things quickly. In other words, you speak them and then it, it kind of tells the computer to write it, and you, you should see some of the mistakes it makes quite beyond belief. Talking of mistakes, uh, some people think we're very mistaken to continue with this current board of directors at Arsenal. Uh, Gunner Talk. Gunnertalk.com is one of those websites that goes uh, that, that really believes this and, and that things should change from the top. I have to say I tend to agree. Uh, I don't know the full story behind it, but Gunner Talk seems to know a lot more about it, so I'd, I'd check out that website if I were you. It's all about Peter Hillwood and, and Usmanov. Peter Hillwood obviously didn't want uh, Stan Kroenke coming into the club. He said, we don't want that sort of coming to Arsenal. And next thing you know, Stan Kroenke's invested a lot of money. He's on the board and uh, his shares have, have gone up in value an awful lot since he came uh, came to the club, although we haven't seen any silverware. His shares have gone up from around about £6,000 per share to pushing £16,000 a share. So that's quite a big increase, and he's got pushing 42,000 shares. So he's in the money, well, on paper at least. And then um, the board of directors consists pretty much, according to Gunnar Talk, of Peter Hillwood's friends. Baron Harris of Peckham being one of them. You would think he'd be a friend of mine, as seen as I'm from Peckham, but I've never met Baron Harris walking down East Dulwich Road, for instance. Sir, Chippen, Sir Chippendale, uh, Keswick, is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. Is it Keswick as in Chiswick? Uh, or is it Keswick? He gets right on my wick anyway. Well, he doesn't, because I've never met him, but he's a Chippendale, so he probably gets on well with the girls. But he's um, another friend of uh, Hillwood, and uh, even Gazidez, of course, uh, he's on an awful lot of money. You might say that perhaps that money should be spent on transfers. He's getting £1.6 million, including bonuses, according to Gunner Talk, per year. And Ken Fryer, he's had a bridge named after him. Not many of us can say that say the same, can we? Ken Fryer, um, the, the man who adorns the bridge, one of the bridges, I think it was the North Bank Bridge, or the North Bridge anyway, uh, he's getting... Uh, pushing £700,000 per year, including bonuses. And really, are these people on the board worth that kind of money? I mean, we're generating that kind of money because of the way we deal with things on the transfer front because our season ticket prices happen to be the, the most expensive in the whole Premier League. So um, the argument goes, anyway, on Gunner Talk, that Hillwood um, really objects to Usmanov, or Alicia Usmanov, purely on the basis that he is not friends with him. And if that is so, then I would have to say that's completely unacceptable. Um, and um, there's also the suggestion on Gunner Talk that uh, Hillwood has been hypocritical because uh, Hillwood's invested in, in gold mining, uh, the gold mining industry in Eastern Europe, as has Usmanov. And the very reason for not having Usmanov on board is that he's been involved in dodgy dealings of one sort or another, so the story goes, so allegedly. That's what's been said. Anyway, we shall see what happens. Meanwhile, of course, I'm still upset that we haven't got David Dean back on board. And again, the reason why we're not going to have David Dean back on board is because Peter Hillwood doesn't want that to happen. He seemed to take some pleasure in getting rid of David Dean, according to this report. Anyway, I suggest you read it for yourself. It's on Gunner Talk. I haven't got the exact URL, but I'm sure you can find it. Meanwhile, on the transfer front, there's a lot of news going on. Most of it untrue, I'd have to say. Uh, Junior Hoylett, we've been heavily linked with him, is a Canadian international, obviously played for Blackburn with distinction last season. He's only 21. He's the kind of player that we'd like to have at the club. But um, he's not going to cost that much, so I'm not quite sure why the Times are apparently running a story suggesting that we're going to have to sell players like Nicholas Bentner, like even Johan Giroud, who I personally don't want to get rid of, just to fund uh, the signing of Hoylett, who should be available on a free transfer or possibly close to it because even if there's a fee payable it will be nominal as he's out of contract this summer. So that's my take on the Hoylet situation. I think we've got a very good chance of getting him if indeed we want him.
that's not been made altogether clear at this stage. But it wouldn't surprise me because Blackburn did score four goals against us at Ewood Park. I can't remember if Hoylett was playing in that game, but they gave us a lot of problems. Another player who's given us problems, but we won't be signing, is Emil Heskey. He's available on a free transfer, but um, he's getting on a bit. But players we could pluck from Aston Villa include Brad Guzan, 27-year-old uh, USA international goalkeeper. I'd love to see him at the club. He's got 19 caps for America. And how many bad American keepers have you seen? The answer, zero. I rest my case. He's six foot four. What else? What else do we want from a goalkeeper? Talking of goalkeepers, Manuel Almunia has already left the club. I wish him good luck. And uh, I don't expect to see him playing in the Premier League next season. I don't expect he'll play top flight football in any of the top leagues uh, in well for the rest of his career. But um, but he's been a reasonable servant, kept a number of clean sheets, as has Lucas Fabianski. Um, I'm waiting to hear the news that he's leaving the club, but it's not reached me yet. If I hear it, I'll let you know right here. And uh, obviously, I'm not a huge fan of, of Fabianski. I actually thought Almunia was a better standby keeper than Fabianski, but uh, some some fans disagree with that assessment. And um, well, anyway, Brad Guzan would be a great backup keeper. But if we're talking about defence, we might want to look just in front of uh, the goalkeeper and uh, Carlos Coelho is a player I've been watching for some time, he was excellent for Glasgow Rangers before he moved to Aston Villa, he's been very popular with the fans at Villa, they're going to miss him, he's leaving on a free transfer, let's get him, he's 30 years of age though so that might put Arsene Wenger off but he's versatile, can play right back, centre back, we need him as a squad player at the very least. Another player being linked with us is Etienne Capot of Toulouse, he's a defensive midfielder, he's kind of like a Villa um, light version, if you like. That's that's what I'm hearing. I don't know an awful lot about this 23-year-old other than that uh, he could be a possible Arsenal sign-in according to recent reports. So the only other one I would mention just before I go is Didier Drogba. I'd love to see him at Arsenal. It's not going to happen. Looks like he's going to Shanghai Shenhua to join Nicolas Anelka, another uh, ex-Premier League winner. Uh, and uh, obviously a Premier League winner with us before he, before he did the same at Chelsea. So could be uh, Drogba, a former Arsenal target, will be with Nicolas Anelka, a former, a former Arsenal player. So we'll, we'll have to wish them the very best um, in their careers in the Far East. And uh, meantime, if you've got any comments, do drop me a line. Thanks again to the Wise Man, or Wise Man 3, I think he's called. I can't remember. Uh, I've got to get these names right. For dropping me a line just to tell me the volume wasn't on. Many thanks for that, and um, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for listening.